Welcome back to Captains of Industry. Still with me in the studio, Adrian Gore, the CEO of Discovery Holdings. You've also been quoted as saying that you need to come up with sexy, exciting products and you've got to take pride in your work. Is that the tenant of your business? I think it is. I mean, I think, I think the Discovery Group is kind of product obsessed. You know, we believe we're, we're building a product that should be beautiful, it should feel good, it should be kind of too good to be true. And people should aspire to buy it. I mean, that's at the core of our being. So if you it follow sounds like that, a Steve Jobs philosophy with yeah, Apple. I think uh, possibly, uh, but, but in truth, I think that our products generally in our industry are a grudge purchase. People don't wake up in the morning and say, I can't wait to buy life insurance. That doesn't happen. They do it with a car or with you know, some fashion accessories. So I'm a great believer that our products have to feel and look beautiful and they have to be aspirational. People should want to buy them. They should do things that are too good to be true. You know, to an extent, I think vitality is, is kind of a manifestation of that. And I think uh, we're obsessed with making sure our products are good and they do well and they give people value for money. You mentioned the, the grudge purchase aspect. How is the tough economic environment impacting your business across the board at the moment? Well, it's intriguing. I don't, I mean, t to an extent in healthcare, private healthcare in South Africa is people see it as a tax. You don't really get fallout, you know. You get the threat of buy downs and that kind of stuff. And in truth, in, our, in Discovery Health and the Discovery Health medical scheme, the rate of growth has accelerated. Uh, the rate of lapsation, people leaving, has gone down. It's like 3%. It's, I think it's, it's a ludicrously low level. Uh, and I, I would guess as well, I think in difficult times, there's a flight to quality. So there's a kind of, an, uh, you know, there's kind of a counterbalance. In the life insurance side, I think you get much more volatility. We saw lapses go up during the financial crisis. They've in fact come down again. But generally, I would argue the same kind of mindset, that if you're excellent, your products are good. People tend to buy it in good and bad times. And I'm a great believer it's in bad times that you build a good business. It's in bad times that if you invest while others are kind of scattering, that's where you get ahead. You know, so we've kind of accelerated during this time. Have you responded to the recent member activism where people are saying that discovery is too expensive as an administrator in comparison to other players? Well, I think we've responded uh, as I think we should. We should always be absolutely uh, responsive and sensitive and empathetic to the, the needs of our members. I mean, our issue is to make healthcare affordable. People battle to afford it. So being in the spotlight, being, being kind of having to react to these kind of things is part of what we have to do. Um, our process is absolute transparency. You know, there's, there's a process going on. And this is not the first time. This will always go on in healthcare. If it's not this, it's benefits and whatever. And I think the more you dig, the more rigor you will find. And so we've been entirely clear about, you know, actually communicating, uh, making sure people understand it. And I think the important thing that, that people need to understand is per unit of benefit, we're cheaper than all of our competitors. When I mean, you look at the end price of what you do, or what you buy as a member, it's, it's a lot lower, it's 10 to 15% lower. And that at the end of the day, I think, is the test of how our model works. So, I mean, obviously, we, we, we feel the pain of our members. These kind of criticisms are, we have to deal with. But uh, we have to be absolutely open, transparent and responsive, and I think that's what we're doing. When I speak to analysts like Risto Katola out there and they look at the current environment, uh, specifically with the investment case for a discovery, national health insurance always enters into the discussion and whether that is an enormous threat for the likes of a discovery. What are your thoughts on that front? I don't think it is. I don't think it is. I, and I, I say that without any sense of cynicism. I think the, the plans of a national health insurance scheme are responsible and rational and and I think that over time it should form a safety net uh, for the country and a better safety net than we have now in the public system but the idea that we'll replace private medical schemes is not something I think people are expecting I don't think it'll happen it's unfortunate we don't have money enough money as a country to do that so the role of people being able to buy up and out of that system is here to stay and uh, that's how it is it's a bit like life insurance if people didn't die you wouldn't need us but they do die unfortunately so I don't, see, I don't see it as a threat, I see it as something we have to help build and I see a comprehensive, better coordinated healthcare system with a strong public sector as something frankly that the country desperately needs, so I'm not concerned about it. I'm going to jump back to geographies because I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about your UK operation, Pru yeah. Health, Pru Protect, etc. What are you seeing coming out of that territory now, especially in light again of the uncertainty and the volatility we're seeing in the economic environment? Yeah in that environment? I'm very excited about the UK. Uh, we did an acquisition on the health side. That's gone very well. Our life insurance business, Prupetet, has really got fantastic market share. All of our innovations and ideas as we roll them out get traction. So that business is doing better than we expected. Um, having said that, in the UK, you do feel economic. It's kind of a place that's, how can I say, that is 
when there's a downturn, there's a feeling of gloom. You know, you know what I'm saying? And in the case of healthcare, healthcare is, pro is complex because you've, you've got the NHS where people have a real viable option. So it's a bit the opposite of the NHI, where people really can drop out. So we feel a bit of that kind of, how can I say? On the ground. Gloom. It's, it's Could tough. also be exacerbated by the weather. Yeah, probably, but the, the reality is that the businesses both are doing better than expected and I think offer fantastic potential for us. I think outside of South Africa, that is our, by far our biggest play and I'm excited by it. The issue of balance. Now let's go more into the, the personal side of things. Do you think that you've got some element of balance because you are an Orthodox Jew and on Saturdays that's for family and friends? I've done my reading on this front. Um, do we yes. all need to convert in other words? No, no, I don't think you do. I think you, I think you need some excuse for downtime. You know, whether it's a faith excuse, whether it's, it's you know, I, I kind of, I've always, you know, I, I didn't come from orthodox, my, my wife was very orthodox. When I got married, I kind of got into, got, and I'm, I'm really grateful for it because it's created that balance because I'm not really a balanced person, not at all. If I didn't have that kind of carved out time, I think the balance would be terrible. I, I love what I do. I work 20 hours a day. But I, I, I do. I, I would encourage w whatever it is. You need some disciplined downtime from the cell phone, from emails, from work, whatever it is. Somehow it gives you. It, it makes you more effective. You feel guilty about it while you're doing it, but when you pop out the other side, you're fresher. You, you're better at what you do. Let me push you a little bit further on this. How disciplined on Saturdays are you that I'm you don't pick up your cell phone and you don't work? I don't read an email. I don't on a Friday evening even don't read anything with business. I won't even read the business side of the newspaper. On Saturday, I'll start to read the Harvard Business Review and kind of start meandering closer, but I do nothing. I don't take calls. It's a fantastic break. And I think it's something that others out there should, should start to follow. In terms of travel and balance, now that you are across so many geographies, do you like to be visible? Do you like to be hands-on? You've already said that you put great people uh, in territory. Mm. Do you leave it to them? or do you travel? I do leave it to them and we've got strong people all over but the truth is there's no, there is no substitute for being there. Uh, in markets like Asia there's a protocol about if you're not there in a senior way visible to the senior people in a ping on where, wherever, there's a kind of a lack of respect. You've got to be there, you've got to almost show at the drop of a hat I came to see you, I'm worried about this, you know. So you've got to be out there. I've also found when you're in a territory Nothing else matters. There's kind of a focus and that's what you need. When you're sitting here, no matter what you're doing about reading reports about China, about, there isn't the same intensity. So there is no real replacement for being on the ground. I go to all of our, our businesses. I'm up and down all the time. Um, um, but having said that, you know, things like video conferencing, we've invested in substantial equipment where you can actually get HD connectivity. It does make a difference. I think it does reduce the need to go that much. But I, I, I'm a believer that you've being there, I mean, it's Woody Allen, he's nine-tenths of, you know, being present is nine-tenths of the game. You've got to be there. You've got two daughters, a son, obviously a very happy, stable marriage. Does your family travel with you? Um, they actually do now and then. If my kids, my two daughters are not at university, if I've got a break, I'm off to Asia tomorrow. I'll take my one daughter with me. You know, she'll mill around and it's, it's a great luxury for me. So wherever I can, I try to bring them in. But in my job, I accept that, that during the week I'm on the road. I mean, that's how it is. One of the key concerns that you have expressed before is crime and the level of crime in South Africa. And you've, you have said that discovery will play a big part in trying to, I suppose, what, rectify the situation. I, are you there? Is discovery a player? No, you're not. I wouldn't say we're a player. I think there's a number of initiatives we funded and helped think through, and I think we provided some input. Having said that, I think the crime rate has come down quite a bit. The statistics show it and I think anecdotally you feel it. I think a few years ago we felt we were under siege. There wasn't a day that didn't go by where you know you have some friend, family, colleague who's been attacked, hijacked. Of course that's still present but I think as a country it's better than it was and I think it's the rate of change that kind of unseats people. You know, So there's a feeling of stability, maybe a slight downward trend and I'm not as frantic as I, I think I was some years back. I'm feeling better about it. We have to continue to work hard on it but I think that hopefully we, it's better than it was. How are you feeling about the level of unemployment among the youth though? We're sitting now at 51%. Isn't that a I'm huge problem it. on the horizon? Yeah, I think it's a massive, I think it's a worldwide problem. It's the issue of youth unemployment. It's a, it's a major problem. I don't know the solution to it. I do know this. We have to just grow out of it. We have to build great companies. We're not doing enough of that stuff. The, uh, the secret is entrepren entrepreneurs who build businesses small and big. Not enough of that stuff going on. I'm worried about it. But on the other side, the mindset that things are about to melt down, we're heading for Armageddon, 
pe people are more robust than that, no matter you know wherever they are. The world is more robust than we give it credit for. So I remain an optimist, but these are challenges. You accomplished so much. Now obviously you've got your, your new ventures playing out, ping on, you driving the vitality element in the US and the UK is doing very well. What else do you want to do? Look, when, will, when will it be enough for, for you? I man? would like Discovery to be the best insurance group in the world. That's what, 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 what I'd like to do. And uh, you know, we've actually dissected that into a number of things, earnings growth, geography, social, good, uh, every aspect of what we're doing. Um, we are so embryonic in that vision. You know, these, these markets we're talking about are still embryonic. I mean, they're all really in a startup phase. So in truth, we are just starting out. I mean, I kind of feel we're just getting into our stride. So I don't feel any sense of where to. It's quite kind of the pathways are there. There are too many options. It's about focus and about achievement in those pathways. Adrian, thanks so much for your time. We've come to the end of this week's edition of Captains of Industry. Until next time, it's goodbye and thank you for watching.